Hi, I'm Doug Lambert, and I practice in Edina, Minnesota with a fantastic partner and a great staff. We emphasize cosmetic, comprehensive, and sports dentistry. My tip today revolves around a book. It's called The Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande. Now maybe you've read that book, and if you have, you understand the importance of that and maybe what it would relate to dentistry. But it talks about the importance of checklists for safety and efficiency in what we do in life and in business. And I've extended that to our practice, where I've made out a checklist for every procedure that we do in our office. I'd like to share my direct composite checklist with you today. It's simply six steps, and the steps start with the tooth itself. What's going on with that tooth already? Does it have a crack in it? Is the patient having symptoms with it? Is it sensitive to hot and cold? That's a discussion that you need to have with that patient before you even pick up a handpiece. How about preparation and isolation of that bonding site? A matrix formed mold of whatever sort you choose would be very important in order to get a good seal at that gingival margin. Use of adhesive dentistry, bases, and liners. That's very important to us too, regardless of whether we're using a total etch, self-etch, or selective etch technique. And especially in the adhesive dentistry, understand the, the directions for use. If you don't understand those directions, you might put that application on incorrectly and have a less than ideal outcome. Light curing technology, probably the most underappreciated thing that we do at the chair right now is understanding how our lights work. Positioning of the light, the energy coming out of the light, and even the size of the tip is important. A 10 millimeter diameter seems to be the sweet spot to being able to get enough light energy around the tooth. Placement of the composite. This has really changed a lot, of course, for us in the posterior region, where the ability to use direct composites in bulk and semi-bulk fill applications is paramount to good efficiencies at the chair. And especially, now we go to the final step, and that's finishing and polishing. We can spend a lot of time finishing and polishing, but I like to get my technique down to a very simple process of using 12-bladed spiral carbide burrs for my finishing and the polishing with abrasive cups because teeth have compound curves and abrasive cups and points do a great job of polishing those compound curves. So that's my checklist on direct composites and perhaps you can create your own checklist manifesto for you and your team to build efficiencies in at the chair.